So first off, um, we have Mary Gunther, who's the director of space policy at the Commercial Space Flight Federation. If you've worked with CSF in the past, then you know that they are a four-person team doing the work of 40. So she leads the policy development and lobbying efforts over at CSF, where she's focused on promoting policies that enable fair and open competition, spur innovation, and expand public-private partnerships. Before that, she was a PSM or permanent staff member at the Senate Commerce Committee, working with stakeholders across NASA, the National Science Foundation, the Federal Aviation Administration, and the Department of Commerce. Mary has made a career of building relationships with stakeholders across the federal government and beyond, which is why I'm really excited to have her here today to talk the importance of authentic relationships. Welcome, Mary. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Maxwell. So thank you for having me here today. I'm really excited to talk to you all about the importance of authentic relationships. So my start in space policy was a little unconventional, as I think a lot of people's are. Um, I was desperate to get onto the Hill um, initially, and finally, after a long search, found an assistant role at the Senate Commerce Committee, which oversees space policy within the Senate. Um, and even during my interview process, before day one, I made it super clear to uh, the staff leadership of the committee that I really wanted a policy portfolio. I didn't care which one, I didn't care when, I just wanted it as soon as possible, whatever was open. So I went on um, and I, I really enjoyed being an assistant over at the committee, but I continued to badger, like, okay, it's time, please, something, it'll open up eventually. And lo and behold, it did. The space and science policy portfolio became open in August of 2018. And I, I didn't know the first thing about space or science policy, but I was thrilled and I knew I'd learn. Now, I don't know if the date November 2018 means anything to the, you, you all, but if you're in the space policy realm, you'll know that that's when Senator Bill Nelson, now NASA administrator, lost his Senate seat in Florida. Uh, it was a, a rough day given that he led the committee um, at the time, and it foretold a number of changes in our staffing posture. So first of all, our, the head of our subcommittee left in December of 2018. Um, he went on to industry, and, which was wonderful for him. And then our number two was pregnant at the time and went on maternity leave in January. Um, and so if you're doing the math there, you'll know that I became the acting head of the Space and Science Subcommittee four months after I became part of that policy team. I didn't know the first thing. I couldn't have told you the differences between Artemis and Apollo as they were rolling it out. Um, but I knew I'd learn, <laughs> uh, and learn I did. So as you can imagine, uh, it was pretty terrifying uh, to go from a junior staff role to being an acting head that quickly. Um, without a lot of kind of background on what that policy landscape looked like. And luckily, my first instinct was to reach out to the lobbyists who seemed really nice during Hill meetings um, here up to that point and beg them, like, please tell me, like, what do you know? Who should I be talking to? What are like the political touchstones so I don't just totally put my foot in my mouth, which I still did, but we try to minimize that. <laughs> And that time in my life is particularly vivid, and I focus my speech on it, not only because I was able to learn so quickly, but also because the power of relationships became very clear to me. There were a number of lobbyists who I spoke to frequently who had been very kind to me and engaged with me as a junior staffer all the way up to a senior staffer. And then there were folks who you know, wouldn't even shake my hands in meetings when I was a junior staffer and all of a sudden wanted to be my best friend. Um, it left a bit of an icky feeling in my gut, um, and it's something that's stuck with me since then, um, because I never want to make another person feel that way. Ultimately, people are people. Um, they may be a target on a list, um, and they may be relevant to a policy push of some kind, but without having some kind of a background with them, some kind of rapport, um, it can get a little tricky and can often make it challenging to achieve success. Now, I think a lot too about the importance of collaboration. Um, as those of you all know, 
as wonderful as lobbyists are, it's really important to talk to a number of them um, to make sure that you kind of have an understanding of where the division points between people are exactly. I like to think of it as pieces of a puzzle and you're collecting them from all across the policy landscape and putting them in or in keeping with the space theme today. You can think of it as different kinds of imaging. If you get an image of a planet in a certain frame, you know, you, you know some things and sometimes that kind of imaging will get you exactly what you need and you'll be able to carry it out by yourself wonderfully. But most of the time, if you can have a couple of different kinds of imaging, you'll have a much clearer picture um, and you'll have a much better sense of how to get further and faster using those relationships. So if I can leave you all with anything today, uh, it's about the importance of relying on one another, the importance of collaboration, and the importance of engaging authentically with other people, thinking of them as people and trying to establish those relationships and trying to bring your whole self to work, you know, within professional guidelines. Um, because in my experience, that has been really crucial to establishing the warm relationships that have gotten me the policy wins I have today. So with that, I'm going to hand it back to our wonderful moderator. Thank you all so much.